Hello guys and girls and welcome to another Sunday afternoon chat. Chris and I are just pulling away from Midway Hills Baptist Church where we had a fantastic worship service today. Uh, I might steal a couple <laughs> I might steal a, a couple of things that the preacher talked about because Chopper was preaching up a storm, talked about some good things today, no doubt about that. So I might uh, I might steal a little bit of his, but Chris and I I've got the ranger boat on back behind. Don't know if you can see it back there or not. Got a lot of stuff back up there in the back window. We got the truck pretty much loaded and uh, we're heading to to Sherry's. Uh, heading over there right now where Chris is gonna be spending a couple of days. And uh, looking forward to a great week this coming week. Um, golly, uh, we got a lot to be thankful for this week and uh, we got a lot that some things happened this week that was uh, it was pretty bad as well. Not pretty bad, really, really bad. A tremendous uh, tragedy. And uh, but uh, got a uh, highway patrolman here on the side of the road, and somebody's trying to pass me, and finally decided he might back off just a little bit. We have a law here in Oklahoma, like they have pretty much in every state, I think, that if you see flashing lights on the side of the road, you're supposed to change lanes. Some people are in such a big hurry that they have a difficult time doing that. But uh, <laughs> but the guy that was slowing down when he finally saw it. So it's, it's real foggy out here today. We've got tremendous storms coming in here to Oklahoma tonight. They are predicting 80 and 90 mile an hour winds. Now, the only thing about that, those are damaging winds. Those are almost tornado size type winds and uh, I don't even know what the threshold is for a tornado. I think it's just about 100 mile an hour, maybe 110. And of course that's rotating. These are straight winds, straight winds, but 80 and 90 mile an hour winds can do a lot of damage. There's absolutely no doubt about that. So uh, uh, we even canceled church tonight because of the weather guys can't really get in their mind about when it's going to hit. Probably not going to hit until about midnight down here in southern Oklahoma. Uh, but it's going to be some uh, pretty dev devastating stuff. We've got cameras all over our house, and so we'll be able to kind of watch the storm when it hits tonight at midnight, and uh, hopefully it doesn't tear too much up. We likely will lose a pecan tree or two or three or four during this. Pecan trees uh, have a hard time with really uh, dramatic straight wind, and so uh, we're, we're, we're concerned about that, but, uh, but we're, we, we, we plant pecan trees all the time, so we, we replace them, that's for sure. It, it, you can't really replace a big pecan tree that's been there for 30 or 40 or 50 years. Uh, there's no doubt about that, but uh, you can replace them for somebody on down the line, I guess. And uh, uh, they, they start bearing, you know, really relatively quickly, just a few years. So, uh, you know, we, we still we can plant some this year and we're going to see the fruits of their labor. We sure will. But, uh, but it's been a good week. We had a good week. We had all the deer made it really good throughout the week. Y'all saw that forest as we left for church this morning. <laughs> still had his antlers. He still had his antlers. So it is amazing how that boy is holding on and just not wanting to give up for them. He's looking around and he sees some of his buddies that don't have them anymore. So Forrest has kept, kept his antlers. Chris did wonderful walking this week. Uh, Stephen came by two or three times. I think he might have come by three times, but I think maybe only twice. And he said that that was the best walk she had done and I could tell that some of y'all saw the walking uh, that she done with Stevens this week and and uh, in one of the deer videos we, we put a little clip in there and uh, some of you even commented that that's the best you've seen her walking and you know she'd been walking some with help for quite a while now but uh, and it's a slow improvement but if you go back and look at some of those videos uh, when she first started being able to to, to walk at all it is a tremendous difference she's bending her her uh, right in that leg she still can't feel that leg so that's a difficulty and she is only moving it really with her groin although she can move her foot around she can move her foot so some of that's transferred down into her leg so we're getting there we're getting there and uh, she's going to just get better and better as time goes on uh, we're at March 5 which is just right around the corner we're, her and I were talking this morning on the way to church and uh, uh, you know it February's about gone. Uh, February's about gone. I told her, I said, well, and she said, well, it's gone. You might as well say it's gone. And I guess that's right. But uh, we've only got a couple days left. Uh, those of you uh, might have noticed uh, and, and saw, because we had lots and lots of comments about it, uh, Travis, uh, Travis uh, uh, Townsend um, had a really bad car wreck and is in serious condition, critical condition, not serious condition. 
uh, in the Oklahoma City OU Med, Med Center, which is a great new hospital that we have in Oklahoma. Same hospital that took care of Chris immediately when she had her stroke, and they're just wonderful people there. They're just absolutely dedicated um, from the doctors all the way down to the nurses. And Yeah, you know, if you've been with us long, that I had a little trouble with the doctor saying Chris would probably not leave that that hospital alive. And uh, but, but, you know, he's just given his uh, professional opinion, I suppose, and uh, his professional opinion did not have God factored in, did not have thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, probably into the millions of prayers that happened uh, almost overnight all across the country, uh, all across the world, really. And uh, many, many, many of you, I know because you tell me so, have continued to pray every single day for my beautiful Chris, and I appreciate that so very much. But um, uh, we had a good week, uh, pretty much a cold week. We had uh, three days that just pretty much stayed in the 30s, but it's, uh, it got warmer during the night. It's actually 50 degrees right now. It's been a few days since we saw 50 degrees. We started that with an 80 degree degree day and a 77 degree day. That's right, Monday and Tuesday was unbelievable. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it uh, kind of turned can't say turn south on us that's what we say in the south it turns south but i think it turned north on us and uh, some of that came down some of y'all have uh, are, have had uh, pretty weather uh on during the week and lousy weather on the weekend we've had it just the opposite of that um uh, here um and uh, I, I wanted to mention something that i've got a question or two on because in one of the devotionals this week i talked about that we would all stand before almighty god and be judged and, and a, a, a few of you have mentioned that that's kind of confusing uh when we're judged and by god can we forfeit our our uh, our citizenship in heaven can we forfeit our salvation and i just want to say absolutely not we cannot forfeit our salvation and um, uh as our preacher chopper mccartney mentioned this morning that we will all be judged we actually will be and uh, but the thing about it is that uh, the Bible tells us we'll be judged, so we know we're going to stand in front of Almighty God, and uh, and we will be held accountable one way or the other. I don't know what for uh, everything that we've ever done that's been bad, but everything that we've been done that's been bad has been covered by the the blood of, of Jesus. I was hoping that Chopper would go into that a little bit more this morning, and he really didn't. So uh, I, I don't have anything more than what what I believe and what I've read in the Bible, and and you know I've read the Bible a lot. Uh, read it completely through every year since I was in my mid-20s, so that's a long time, but, uh, but I know that, uh, I know that everything, every sin that we've ever committed, uh, is covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, and, um, wow, and, and the other thing I was asking about by, by some of you is, um, uh, will there be like uh, a pecking order in heaven? Uh, will Billy Graham be at the top of the list? Will Moses be at the top of the list? Will Peter or, or King David or King Solomon be at the top of the list? Uh, I'm telling you, we're all at the top of the list. And uh, and uh, will some mansions be bigger than the others? Yeah, I suspect they will. Uh, will some of us, uh, you know, kind of be surprised that, that we're even getting a, man a mansion at all? Well, we shouldn't be because we... Jesus said he was going ahead preparing a mansion for us, and so we will get one. But uh, uh, but anyway, uh, you know, even our idle thoughts, our idle words, uh, we're held accountable for those is what, what it tells us in the Bible. But Jesus has paid it all. Jesus has paid for all of the things that we've done wrong, and, and God's not going to. Uh, not going to remember our sins uh, with Jesus sitting right there by his side saying, this one's mine. This one's mine right here. This one's mine. And uh, and so uh, don't be too concerned about that. Uh, but if you're not saved, if you're not a, a born-again Christian, if you haven't trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, can I tell you, you definitely need to be concerned. Definitely need to be concerned about whether your name is written in that book of life or not because uh, you have a problem. You have a problem, and a problem at that time that can't be solved, but a problem that can be today solved by making Jesus Lord of your life. Uh, we're looking forward to a great week this week. Like I said, we had a great week this past week. I did not get to go out and fish. Like I, I wanted to go up to the end of the uh, lake uh, and fish some of that fresh water running in. Our creeks are running. Our Twin Eagle Lake is getting close to normal. And I wanted to go up there and fish where some of that water is running in. I'm pretty sure there might be a few bass moved up in there. Might have been a lot of bass. I might have been able to go up there and catch one just ever throw. I've done that many, many times when this happens. 
and uh, it's happening in February is unusual. Usually that happens in March or April, but to happen in February is unusual, but that's water still running in. I'm sure some of those fish went up there. I just did not find any time at all I could put my uh, boat in the water and, and go up there and, and fish that. And uh, I didn't have any time I could even put the tracker down that I keep in the, in the boat dock and, uh, and go up there and fish. Uh, just seemed like every second of every day was taken out by something. We we did a lot this week. We had a lot of great things that we were able to do. Uh, obviously, uh, Travis had that incredibly bad car accident and truck accident. Uh, and, you know, his Ram truck, uh, if, if, if anything, says something good about driving a big a big pickup. He had a big uh, three-quarter ton or one. I think it was a one ton. Yeah, he had a big one ton uh, Ram truck. And it's one thing to be said about a uh, Ram truck or, or any big truck, really, for that matter. These big trucks are probably the most safest thing you can drive in. That uh, Without a doubt, if he'd have been in a smaller vehicle, he probably would have definitely been killed. Uh, Travis has got a lot going for him. Uh, the biggest thing he's got going for him is is y'all y'all praying like you've been doing, and uh, since I mentioned that on that deer video, and uh, y'all been praying, you know, really by the thousands. And the other thing he's got going for him is he's young; he's 23 years old. And uh, uh, most of y'all that are listening to me today are uh, older than 23. A few of you are not, but one of the things that as you get older, you realize that you healed up a lot better and a lot quicker at 23. So. He's got that going for him. Plus, he's got a God that's hearing about him on a on a, a regular basis, and uh, and God will reach down and touch his body, I believe, and keep him alive. And he's got a long, hard battle, but he's young, he's tough, he's a cowboy and a trapper. Man, what a combination—a trapper and a cowboy. Uh, so, uh, if it, if it can, if anybody can make it through it, I believe it. Tra uh, Travis can. And, uh, and I'm going to continue to pray for him. And I'm sure a lot of y'all going to continue to pray for him as well. We will try to keep you updated as much as possible. Uh, we put an update up uh, yesterday or day before, I believe, on our Facebook page, our Jimmy Houston Outdoors Facebook page. I know a lot of you detest Facebook. Uh, some of y'all, a lot of y'all are listening to this on Facebook. We got, you know, 630-some-odd thousand people on Facebook and only about all three channels combined, about 150-some-odd thousand on YouTube, but uh, if you want to uh, catch uh, a little bit of that, uh, uh, a little bit of the Travis update on Travis, I'll try to do one maybe once every week or so and we'll see what happens. But uh, you want to catch an update on Travis, uh, it'll be over there on our Facebook page. Uh, Jimmy Houston Outdoors, all capital letters, all capital letters. And uh, those of you that are on Facebook, uh, for goodness sakes, get over and subscribe to some of our, our, our YouTube channels Jimmy Houston Outdoors Fishing, which is all fishing. Uh, Catch a Better Life, which is our devotional channel uh, where we read the devotional from a Catch a Better Life book. And, of course, Jimmy and Chris Houston's Twin Eagle Ranch. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe to YouTube, just like it doesn't cost anything to uh, be a, a friend or a follower at uh, on Facebook. So, uh, really and truly, y'all really want to follow everything we're doing. You need to be on both, and you need to be on all three of our YouTube channels. But... Uh, uh, we'll try to keep you updated uh, on Travis as much as we possibly can. We just met Travis ourselves not too long ago, and he started trapping there on our ranch, and uh, and he's doing a really good job. We caught seven or eight coyotes, and at least eight coyotes, and uh, and an otter, and uh, some coons, and a, a fox, and uh, at least one bobcat. And, uh, I hadn't talked to him in a couple, two, three days, so he's probably caught really more than what I know about. But uh, anyway, uh, continue to pray for, for Travis Trenum uh, and uh, Trenum, <laughs> a different, different guy, Townsend, Townsend, Travis Townsend. And uh, like I said, I, you know, I have a hard time remembering his last name myself. So uh, you pray for Travis. God knows who you're talking about. I know there's a lot of Travis's getting prayed for right now, but God knows who you're talking about. Trust me. Trust me. Uh, I've been kind of rambling around here a little bit, and I don't mean to do that, but uh, just uh, like I said, the deer is all good this week. Uh, a lot of the deer are hanging around the house. Everybody's staying healthy. Uh, we're, spring is about to sprung. It's about to happen, and uh, there's a lot of green showing up all around the country as we drive down the road here in southern Oklahoma. As we've gone just a little bit away from sulfur and headed toward the north, uh, we see that it's not nearly as ground, ground uh, green. Look out here, honey. It's not as green as it is down around our house, is it? not hardly any green at all showing out here in the uh, in the fields and stuff and we've got quite a bit going so and that's just a few miles it's not that many miles we're uh, 
uh, we're not, you know, all that far from uh, yeah, about 40 miles from home is all we are. So, uh, but uh, there's not much green showing here. So it's just a little bit of south makes a big difference, makes a big difference. And we are very southern Oklahoma. We're the southernmost part of, of Oklahoma and still be in Oklahoma where our ranch is. So, uh, but, but it's gonna happen everywhere. Uh, the green will start moving north and we got pretty weather coming up. The month of March, things are gonna green up really, really good. And uh, the deer's antlers are gonna start going back pretty soon and we'll be able to start telling uh, we know those are boys out there. We we know who they are, and uh, but they sure look funny without any without any antlers on their head, and they look a little bit depressed too. Uh, I'm sure they're proud of that big rack they're growing. It's going to be interesting to watch them all grow them again. So uh, be sure and be sure and keep up with that. It's going to start happening here pretty 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 quick. Uh, one thing I wanted to do and end this end this on today is talk about and y'all stay with me on this because this is important. Uh, talk about the revival that is beginning to happen around colleges, mostly Christian colleges, yes, but around colleges here in the United States of America. The United States of America has disobeyed God pretty big time and is disobeying God more and more all of the time. So many of the principles of God that's in the Bible and those principles cannot be shaken that the same as they were when God inspired a man to write them down. Uh, they won't change. They won't change uh, if, if the earth is still here a thousand years from now. Those principles won't change at all. Godly principles. And, and we have governments all around the world, including our own, that uh, is violating those principles big time. Big time. And uh, you know, it's so amazing to me that and I think uh, we're kind of this all we began hearing about it on the news was a, a college in Kentucky, a Christian college in Kentucky, uh, started a revival that just, they just kept on with the revival. It just like never ended. And uh, they kept praising and worshiping God and, and singing praise songs and, and, and all night and all day and all night and all day. And I don't know, it may still be going on right now. I'm not sure. And uh, I remember, uh, uh, some of the people on TV said, well, I want to come over there. We want to come over there and witness this in person. And they said, we don't need TV here. We're not doing this for show. We don't need this on television. We're doing this for God. And it's a real revival. And it seems really fantastic to me. And again, Chris and I was talking about this on the way to church this morning, how, how revival in America, something that preachers ask for and pray for probably just about every day churches hold what they call revivals and sometimes some people show up sometimes they, they don't uh, mostly christians show up and some of them are revived their spirit is, is lifted they uh, become uh, closer to god they become better witnesses better moms better dads better grandma and granddads better friends better employees better bosses because god makes them that way god makes them that way but uh but all that, all that being, all that being said, boy, this intersection came up on us in a hurry. It is so foggy out there. I don't know if y'all can hardly tell that. But man, this intersection came up in a hurry. And this is one where the big trucks go by at 70 miles an hour, uh, and you got to stop coming off of that. So a person missed that there in the fog and pull out there in front of a truck. It could be a deadly experience. That came up on me in a hurry. I didn't realize I was there at that thing so quick because you can't see very far. It's just really, it's getting foggier and foggier all the time. And Chris and I pulled boats thousands of miles in fog where we couldn't only see the front of our truck. And it, the most, um, it's just about as bad as hard rain, I think, but it's the most uh, tense driving that you can do. So I'm really paying attention to what I'm what I'm doing here. I might not think I am, but I am. I really am really looking down the road uh, closely here, but but back to that deal about revival. And uh, but who would have ever thought? Who would have ever thought that would revival with all of the churches we have? And we live in the Bible Belt in Oklahoma. Uh, the Bible Belt is uh, from here down to Texas and up a little bit of Kansas and all the way to the East Coast is kind of considered the the Bible Belt. Uh, Baptist churches on every corner, Methodist churches, uh, Church of Christ, Church of God, on and on and on and on and on. Catholic churches. Uh, uh, the Bible Belt, the people living by the Bible, uh, living with God, believing in God, and uh, the one that some politics, the top part of the country that some politicians make fun on, fun of because we lean on our God. 
but uh, it's it's amazing with so many churches, uh, so many preachers, so many evangelists, uh, so many television shows, so much social media, so many guys like me who are just a common, ordinary, everyday person out there, a fisherman, not a preacher at all, and uh, on social media. And, uh, and, and, you know, I do have the opportunity to speak at 15 or 20 churches a year and uh, just spoke at a couple here in the last couple of weeks or three, I guess, and got three or four more coming up uh, the, the rest of this, uh, well, not the rest of this month, but in March and, and then April and May and all throughout the year. And, and so uh, guys just like me, uh, uh, lots of people, they're just regular people that have got devotionals on, on, uh, on, on social media, on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, uh, Instagram, Twitter, I can't think of all of them, but you know we pretty much use Facebook and, and, and YouTube. We're all in those other deals too, but we really don't pay, pay a whole lot of attention to the others too awful much. But uh, and we do have thousands of people on Twitter and, and Instagram, not hundreds of thousands, but twenty or thirty thousand, something like that. But uh, but but it's amazing to me that with all of that going on, with all the churches, all the evangelists, all the big time uh, television show preachers. Uh, and all the social media people out there and, and all of the uh, of the, the concerts and Christian music that goes on that we're, we're uh, incredibly talented people tell folks about God. Isn't it amazing that college kids have started this great revival here in the United States of America? College kids. Uh, you know, when I was in college, uh, my, my generation was famous for, uh, for demonstrations and riots and... and uh, Slogans: uh, Make love, not war. I kind of like that myself, but uh, we protested a lot uh, when, when, when I, my generation. And then we've seen generations of protesters, and we have people out there uh, having gay parades and protesting about all kinds of things, and burning down cities, and and uh, and doing all kinds of, of hateful stuff, and having sort of a, a, a exact opposite deal of uh, the revival that's going on and started in, in, in Christian colleges and and I guess that college in Kentucky started it but it seems like about every day I hear about another college and most of them are Christian colleges but even at Christian colleges even at Christian colleges they 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 they, they, they have a lot of bad stuff going on I know I know we got Oklahoma Baptist University and uh, you know here in Oklahoma uh, we have uh, Oral Roberts University here in Oklahoma. We have several Christian universities, several here in Oklahoma. And uh, there's bad things goes on in every single one of them. But isn't it something that college age kids, 17, 18, 19, 20 year old kids, 21, 22 year old kids have started a great revival in the United States of America. These kids are not burning down buildings. They're not uh, trying to defund our police force. They're not, uh, you know, they're, they're not wanting to, to take the criminal side on everything. And they're not wanting to, they don't hate America. They love America and they love God. And they love the fact that God's blessed America so much. So uh, I guess I just want to say that I'm, I'm so proud of some of the youth of America. And uh, we have so many colleges and universities where, uh, you know, they, they you're listing on applications now where you got a list uh, what gender you prefer, not what gender you are, and and, and no matter what you go to, where you go to college, same thing is happening in high schools and, and and junior high schools and grade schools. And I know I didn't say in kindergarten, and I, I know I didn't say all that right. They're called by different names now. But can I tell you that if, you, if those kids are still boys and girls, they're still boys and girls, they're still young men and young women, and uh, and they don't get to choose that. God gets to choose what you are. Uh, and uh, you're you're a you're a, you're a boy or a girl. You're a man or a woman. And God made that choice for you. You don't get to uh, have some sort of feeling and think that it can be differently. And and adults at those schools, whether they be kindergarten or or whatever, they don't have the right. And they don't have the uh, they don't they can't they can't change you. They can't they can't change you from a boy to a girl or a girl to a boy. They can't do that, even though many of them are trying. And but isn't it amazing? It just uh, it just warms my heart that teenagers and boys and girls in their young 20s are leading a great revival for God in America and I don't know where this revival will stop uh, it might be a revival planned by all the almighty God himself where he could get as many people saved as he possibly could before he rained down destruction rained down destruction 
on America. And it's going to happen at some point in time because America doesn't obey God. And our sermon this morning in church, and this is where I want to borrow a little bit, our sermon in church was in the book of Nahum. And uh, some of you may not have even realize that's a book in the Bible. Nahum was a prophet and was sent back to prophesy against the country of Assyria. And one city in that Assyria was named Nineveh. Now, Nineveh is pretty easy for a lot of people to remember because that was the city that God sent another prophet about maybe 100 to 150 years before Nahum. And he said the prophet's name was Jonah. Jonah, that's right. The same Jonah got swallowed by the big fish. God sent Jonah to Nineveh, which was a famous city in Assyria. Wealthy, tremendously successful, high dollar city, like something like a, a New York or a Los Angeles or London or something like that. Johannesburg, I don't know, but a really great city. And he sent Jonah to Nineveh to tell them that they were evil. They were doing a lot of things bad and that he was going to destroy them if they didn't repent and come back to God. Well, they did. They did. But because they didn't evidently teach their children about God and their grandchildren about God, after a period of time, they slowly got away, got away from God. And they turned right back to where they were before. They came right back to where they were when Jonah showed up. This is maybe 100 or 150 years later. An evil, perverse generation. Terrible, terrible people. We look at the war in Ukraine and we see all the atrocities and we think, how bad can Putin be? How bad can he be? Uh, well, that's the way the Assyrians were, except worse, according to the Bible. 100 to 150 years later, he sent Nahum to tell them again how evil they were. But he didn't give them a chance to repent at that time. He told them that God is going to destroy Assyria, the entire country of Assyria. And he named it, you know, more than one city there, but he named Nineveh also. And Nineveh was destroyed then in 612 B.C., 600 years before Jesus was born. Completely wiped off the face of the earth. Completely wiped off the face of the earth. Is America going to be judged the same way? Yeah, it's very possible, unless America changes its way. But right now, maybe a bunch of college kids, maybe a bunch of college kids in a Christian university are leading a revival in America that will turn this country around and get us back to God, that will turn high schools and junior highs and grade schools and kindergartens away from the things that they're teaching them now and bring God back in church. Wouldn't it be amazing? Wouldn't it be amazing if we could bring God back into the schools? If we could bring God back into high schools and colleges and junior highs and grade schools and kindergartens? Because those kids have been taught for 20 years now some pretty bad stuff. Some pretty bad stuff. And if America's going to continue to go on and be the great country that it's been, we need that revival that those college kids are starting and spreading out all over the country, all over the country. This could never happen. could never happen if God wasn't in it. You and I would not have heard about that little college over there in Kentucky if God wasn't in it. When God's in it, whomever is fighting against it is fighting a losing battle. Guys and girls, I'm going to try to have you some real good stuff out there this week. Uh, going to be doing a little bit of fishing. And we'll try to have that on that Jimmy Houston Outdoors Fishing Channel if we can. Y'all go out there and have you a great one. And uh, remember, God loves you. And I love you as well.